Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to spend some time relating our horizontal and vertical components of a vector to the magnitude and the direction of that vector. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So let's let v be a vector of magnitude, magnitude of v, and direction theta. Then v, which we can write as a, b, we know we can also write this as a, i plus b, j, but it's going to equal ai plus bj where a is equal to the magnitude of v times cosine theta and b is equal to the magnitude of v sine theta. Now let's take a look at that uh, before we go on to that last part. What we're saying here is we have this vector v out in space and I'll go ahead and draw it in standard position so it's a little easier to work with theta. So let's say this is my vector v now I know that the vector v has a magnitude of v so that means that the total length of this vector is v now theta is the angle between the x-axis, the positive x-axis and the vector v when the vector is drawn in standard position and we know that a and b in our component form that means that I have this a horizontal component at the base of this triangle and this side of the triangle has length b. That's my vertical component of the vector. So what we're saying here in this second line is just by SOHCAHTOA I know that a over the magnitude of v is equal to cosine theta. So That's going to give me that a is equal to the magnitude of v times cosine theta. We also have that b over the magnitude of v from our triangle here is equal to sine theta and so that gives us that my vertical component b is equal to the magnitude of v times sine theta so we can always express the vector v as v is equal to the magnitude of v times cosine theta times the vector i plus the magnitude of v times sine theta plus the unit vector j. I'm just replacing this a and b we found in this component form with the unit vectors i and j. So let's take a look at a couple of examples and actually in the next video is where we're going to get really deep into the um, the really heavy examples using these component forms but just to give us an idea on how to use this component form how to convert back and forth let's take a look at a couple examples here so find the horizontal and vertical components of the vector with magnitude 40, theta 30 degrees, and express the vector in terms of i and j. So first I need to find my a and b, that's my horizontal and vertical components. So my horizontal component a, I know this is equal to the magnitude of v times cosine theta from our triangle on that previous slide. The magnitude of v here is given to us to be 40, and theta is given to us to be 30 degrees. So this is 40 times cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. So my horizontal component A is equal to 20 root 3. Okay, now let's look at our vertical component B. From our last slide, I know that B is the magnitude of V times sine theta. Magnitude of V is still 40 my theta is still 30 degrees so plugging these in we get 40 times sine of 30 degrees which is 1 half and 40 times 1 half is going to give us 20 so here's my horizontal component and vertical component and the last thing it asks us to, asks us to do is express the vector in terms of i and j so we're going to have v is equal to a which we know is 20 root 3 times the unit vector i plus b which we know is 20 times the unit vector j and we're done now this is an example of when we have the magnitude of a vector and we have the angle of the vector we can use this version of the component form to find what my horizontal and vertical components are just by taking the magnitude times the respective trig function evaluated at theta now sometimes we'll need to go in the other direction as well so let's say we have this vector v given to us as in its a plus ai plus bj form, its component form, and we need to find, we need to go the other direction and find the magnitude 
and the direction of this v. So I'm given this v is equal to i plus the square root of 3j. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw out a little triangle here so we are completely aware of what's going on. If I have this vector v in standard position with its vertex of the origin, then this component form 1i plus root 3j tells me that this distance at the base of this triangle is 1 and that this long side here is the square root of 3 and this is our direction theta this is my magnitude of v so the magnitude of v remember we have a formula for this already it's very similar to our formula for the modulus of a complex number this is just a squared plus b squared and we see that's very clear from this right triangle in standard position here my a is 1 so I have 1 squared my b is root 3 so I have root 3 squared 1 squared is just 1 root 3 squared is 3 and we get the square root of 4 which is 2 so my magnitude is 2 so we're done with half of the problem now all I need to do is find my direction and remember direction means the angle theta between the positive x-axis and the vector when we draw that vector with its vertex at zero. So here we can use something very similar to what we used in polar coordinates. Notice that theta here, or I should say tangent of theta, is equal to b over a, isn't it? As long as, of course, a is not equal to zero. So plugging in my b and a, I get that tangent of theta is equal to root 3 over 1 or root 3 and we can find our quadrant information again in a very similar way to what we did with complex numbers here I know that I have my horizontal component is positive so I'm to the right of the y-axis my vertical component is positive so I'm above the x-axis so this puts me with a theta in quadrant 1 and we know that if tangent is the square root of 3 and my theta is in quadrant 1, and this gives me a theta equal to pi over 3 or 60 degrees, depending on how the question is asking you to give the solution. And that's it. So this form makes it very easy for us to go from magnitude and direction to the actual component form of the vector, or from component form of the vector to magnitude and direction. And you're going to see this a lot in you know homework type problems or test type problems dealing with airplanes and wind working at the same time or with uh, maybe a boat on a stream and that stream has a current and we need to find effectively what is the magnitude and direction of travel given what the airplane and the boat are trying to do and what that wind and that river current are actually doing to the boat. So that's what we're going to do in the next video and we'll see you there.